uh, on YouTube channel, Hillsdale College, Farming, Warfare, and a Classical Life, Victor David Hansen, posted February 20th, 2024, The Larry Arn Show, 128,317 views. In this episode of The Larry Arn Show, Hillsdale College President Larry P. Arn interviews classicist and military historian Victor David Hansen. The two discuss Hansen's life growing up on his family farm, how he began to study the classics and his insight into the works of Aristophanes and Theseodides. Later, Hansen speaks on the nature of warfare and the death of citizenship and his prescription for getting America out of its current mess. The interview was conducted on September 8, 2023. All of war is really based on ignorance. That everybody in this room, if everybody knew how strong each person was physically, they wouldn't say certain things to certain people, or they wouldn't try things. But what happens with among nations, the strong nations sometimes don't advertise how strong they are. And they give the wrong signal to a Hitler or a Tojo or a Mussolini. And then they do stupid things. And the war then is a learning experience. It teaches, it's what Stucidity said, it's a harsh taskmaster, a harsh schoolmaster. Well, boy, these, these two gentlemen have been speaking and doing stuff for a long time. Larry P. Arn, for gosh sakes, my gosh, you know what, they have a, I think on the campus of Hillsdale, Michigan, I, I think they have a whole garden area dedicated to Ronald Reagan. I think Larry P. Arn, I don't know, I think he served in the Reagan administration somehow, I think so, and Victor David Hansen, well, he's at the Hoover Institute. Yeah. At uh, Palo Alto, Stanford University. You'll be curious to hear what they have to say. I'm a teacher by trade, and uh, I'd love to introduce you. Well, boy, I'm a teacher by trade. Well, you know what, come on. You're a lot more than that, Larry P. Arn. People. Since when is teaching a trade anyway? You're in a chief executive of a Hillsdale College. I mean, you've expanded this college everywhere. You run a whole charter school program, for gosh sakes. Hillsdale College does, yes. You do. The people they should emulate. Uh, Victor Hansen is a great man. He's a farmer. He's a scholar. He's one of the top ten most cited classical scholars in the world today. He's uh, an expert on the classical world and all its parts about war, including modern war, about contemporary politics. Now remember, this was originally recorded in September of 2023. It was reposted on February 20th. And the question is, how does a fellow get to be like that? Uh, and, you know, it, it, you, you'll learn today that uh, one of the ways that you get to be like that is you have to have really remarkable abilities. We don't all have that, but we can all use the abilities that we got. And so here's a man who has done that, and I'm going to try to get him to explain to you how he did it. I want to start out with farming. You grew up on a farm. What's the importance of farming? Well, I think it's a, the balance between physical and mental. And so that if you're farming, it's not just rote labor, but you're thinking, how, how much money am I losing today? How much money are I'm coming in today? What's the value of my labor as far as the year-end bottom line? Or how can I improve... Uh, you don't have to be a farmer to think like that. Everybody in the world thinks like that. I do. How much money am I making today? How much am I making tomorrow? What's my bills today? What's my bill tomorrow? It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a farmer. I'm not taking anything away from Victor David Hansen here, but, you know, well, anyway, I mean, gosh. Everybody does it. doesn't matter. You have to. You're going to get along. Pruners in the vineyard with me. Should this person be working over there? So you're thinking all the time, but then 
you're working all the time. Physically. You know, that, what a biblical reference that is. Pruners in the vineyard. I mean, come on. You know what? My goodness. What the hell are they talking about? Well, let's listen on. They're both very successful gentlemen. Both of these are. They're very successful, so let's just see. Just go a little bit longer. If, you, if you're too physical, you become brutish, and if you're too intellectual, you become a feat. So it's a perfect balance, it was, and it's practical, very, and it, it makes you very self-reliant because uh, there's nobody else but you. you. You keep saying, am I going to get a paycheck this week? It depends on the weather, it depends on... Self-reliant, self-reliant, self-reliant. Who can rely on self? Everybody has a family, everybody has to have a community, everybody needs a neighbor. Self-reliance, oh my gosh. All right, well, let's listen on. I, I'm not being critical. I'm just making an observation. Labor depends on things that you can't calibrate. You, know, you don't know why certain plums ripen at certain times. You, you, you think you know, but then it surprises you. So there's always the unpredictable. That kind of creates a humility that you can't control things, that you're kind of a tragedy. There's a tragedy there that you cannot control, but you have to prepare for it because you never know when you're going to lose a crop or something untoward will happen. Uh, in my family, one generation up, everybody was a farmer. And by the time they've all died or retired, and I think what are there 14 children in the two families above me, one was a farmer. Yeah. And that's what's happened. What, did that change the country? It has. When the, the founders... 1776, 95% of the constituents, the people living in the United States. What the heck's he talking about? The founders? Who is that? The founders? Oh my gosh, what the heck are they talking about on here? Oh my goodness, the founders. 1776? The country wasn't founded in 1776, September 17, 1789. It's what is the, was then going to be the United States were farmers. And by the 1920s, it was about 45%. Now it's 1%. I think Jefferson said, when people are all piled up in the cities, it's not going to work anymore. Oh my God. You know, what the hell is he talking about? Cities? What cities? Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. You know what? Oh well. Here we go. Hillsdale College. Larry P. Arn. Yeah. They have a whole charter school program for gosh sakes. State, several states they're in. Exporting classical education around the country. Out of this college in Michigan. And uh, Hoover Institute. Yeah, we're, that's, yeah. Just look down the list of all the people at the Hoover Institute. Tocqueville seemed to think that the reason in 1832 that things worked with you had all of these autonomous. Oh people. my gosh, now to Tocqueville 1832. What about Andrew Jackson? Yeah. What about the what about the vice president of the United States? Who was from Tennessee or to Kentucky? Who was a white guy who had a wife that was mulatto or black? He did. They entertained the Tocqueville at their house, for gosh sakes, and had a big party for him. A vice president of the United States did that. What the heck is he talking about? Oh, my gosh. And they were not like European peasants. They weren't subver subservient, or they, didn't, they were not serfs, or they were not uh, hard scrabble indentured uh, renters or something, but they were autonomous. I think that's really, that was very important. doesn't mean that it can't be transferred, that autonomy. You can have independent truck drivers, you can have small business people. But what the heck's he talking about? Is he an economist or something? You need a lot of people who are not dependent on the government or a big corporation. And that type of confidence that accrues from that, they're, they're very Wait good. a minute. You know what? We have to, the government provides important services. We have to have a government. Well, we need corporations too. Citizens, and they're practical and they're common sense. The, the difference with farming was that 
had a natural component. You can really see it with things like climate change or um, scientific research. Oh, he's not on the climate change ban, is he? That's a very odd thing for Victor David Hansen to be talking about climate change. That's mumbo jumbo science, isn't it? It's not even approved theory. I find it odd that Victor David Hansen's talking about climate change. Quote unquote, or government policy on nature written or directed or promulgated by people who don't have anything to do with nature other than just venture out on the weekend. Or they're not living with nature, they don't really understand it. And especially if they don't make their living predicated on harnessing nature but not harming nature. It's kind of a partnership. But they romanticize nature because nature they're, they're not dependent on nature. Uh, it, uh, of course, we live better by many measures than we lived when everybody was a farmer. Uh, are you suggesting there's a cost we have to pay in order to live like that? I don't know. I, I, as I, I turned 70 yesterday and I had a grandfather who I live in his bedroom and he lived in the bedroom of his great grandmothers. There's six generations. What is he saying? My gosh. Well, let's hear it. He died in this room when he was um, 86 and his wife, my grandmother, I took care of, she died at 93. They had three daughters, they died at 49. My mother died at 66 and her sister died at 60. And then um, I had a sister-in-law that died at 49, another, her sister died at 54 and I had a daughter that died at 26. And they all grew up in this farm and then they went out stressful jobs uh, and they my grandparents stayed there and they got up they had a routine and i don't think they ever went more than 100 miles they went to new mexico one time in their life but they had a, a, a certain cyclical idea and so you would, they would say things today that seem absurd there's a south wind blowing you better be careful the birds are in the trees this is the phase of the moon and they were attuned to they lived by nature and the cycles, and they had diaries, an almanac they kept for 50 years. And you could look at the day, and they would pretty much tell you what you had to do that day based on what they had done that day 40 years in a row. So I think that must have had something to do with longevity. But they did. Are you kidding me? You know what? I don't know. He's telling this story. Pay a price in the sense that they were constantly apprehensive about... They had to live one more day. They didn't know where the income was coming in. The razor edge as far as the margin of profitability and unprofitability. But there was something about staying... Well, that's words today. I don't know that they used those words back then. I don't, I don't know. Boy, I tell you what. In one place, and I think some of the worst times I've had, it's getting into this, and you as president know better than I do, the flying here or the flying there and getting detached from being one in one place and stationary. And I think it's not good for people. So uh, one piece of advice for young people might be uh, spend some time throughout your life doing something real. Yeah, do something real and... Well, every day I do something real. Every single day is real. What kind of advice is that? I don't understand. Cultivate family, I, I think that's important. They don't just say that that's my sister so that we're close, or that's my best friend so we're close. It's sort of farmers, they tend to uh, maintain relationships or friendships a long time because everybody knows what they are, are what they do, where they're going to be, and they're not going to move suddenly and you're going to lose them. So that I think that was important. Uh, my uh to me, a farm, growing up, uh, my father was the first one to go to college in either family. And so we lived in the city, that is to say, Pocahontas, 6,000 people. But uh, I would go to the farm, and to me, the farm was a playground. To all my aunts and uncles and my parents, the farm was work, 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 work. And Where did he say he lives? close or that's my best friend so we're close it's sort of farmers 
they tend to uh, maintain relationships or friendships a long time because everybody knows what they are, are what they do, where they're going to be, and they're not going to move suddenly. You're going to lose them. So that I think that was important. Uh, my uh, to me, a farm growing up. Uh, my father was the first one to go to college in either family. And so we lived in the city, that is to say, Pocahontas, 6,000 people. But uh, I would go to the farm, and to me, the farm was a playground. To all my aunts and uncles and my parents, the farm was work, 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 work. And uh, they missed it, and they didn't both. Yeah, but they had something real, a connection. They'd worked in the fields together as little kids. Yeah, I have an ambiguous relationship because I saw it bankrupt a lot of people in my family. But on the other hand, I live there, and so if I walk out, I'll see a horseshoe in the dirt if I'm digging, or I'll see a remnant of somebody, or I'll see a, a barn that I remember somebody being there when I was five, the exact same place. It's kind of haunts you. You're in a house, and you can think of every room or every window where somebody from the 19th century. They even talked different, they had different accents, and they had different vocabularies, and you can remember all of that. And you do kind of dumb things. I have eight, eight buildings on, around my house. There's an old shed, there's a barn, and they should have been all been torn down. They were built in 1870 to 1880 with eucalyptus poles. And so I found myself the last few years flying all over the country to speak, to get money, then to rebuild these things that there's no purpose for, other than my grandfather would say, I'd really like to have these buildings in good shape one day. Well, now they're all in good shape, but I don't use them. The, thing, the place looks beautiful, but it's only because I wasn't farming. If I was farming, they wouldn't be there. They would have been bankrupt. So. Great. So, the classics. You have spent a lot of time studying the ancient world, and you know the languages. What? All right. Well, that's so. That's that's a segment on farming. 